In April of 1972, astronaut Charles Moss Duke traveled to the moon as part of the Apollo 16 mission. Approaching our satellite, the astronaut saw strange flashes on its surface. Real fireworks started right in front of it. He wasn't alone in witnessing this strange phenomenon. Almost every astronaut on the lunar expeditions mentioned the unusual glow. Furthermore, the lunar flashes were also detected from Earth. In September of 2022, Ruben Ariza from Colombia shot a five-minute video that clearly shows the lunar fireworks. But what kind of odd phenomenon is this? And why hasn't science been able to solve the lunar anomalies for so many decades? Despite being closer to us than any other space object, the moon still baffles scientists. People began wondering about its origin thousands of years ago. In the ancient city of Tiwanaku, on the walls of the ancient temple of Kailasasaya, there are writings preserved, according to which the moon emerged about 12,000 years ago. Drawings of the Hopi people include a ciphered story of how the moon brought disasters never seen before. Their legends contain descriptions of our planet's tumble and swing, changing its orbit and rotation speed. While the legends of the African Zulu people say that the moon is a flaming dragon's egg, two brothers with scaly skin stole it, hollowed out its yoke, and left its shell in the sky. But even thousands of years later, today's scientists have no definitive answer to the question of the moon's origin. According to one theory in the past, Earth and the moon were in different parts of the solar system. This theory could have put an end to disputes on the moon's origin, except for one finding that bewildered scientists. The fact is that rocks identical to those of terrestrial origin were found on our satellite. So, if our planet and the moon formed in different parts of the universe, how can they consist of some of the same stuff? Professor Sarah Russell from London's Natural History Museum suggests another theory. She thinks the moon and Earth could have formed together. 4.5 billion years ago, when our planet was only just forming, it spun very fast, so fast, that part of its crust split and ended up in its orbit. These scraps then formed the satellite. But the problem is that in this case, the composition of the Moon and Earth should be identical. Partly the first findings by the Apollo astronauts could prove this theory, but soil samples from the far side of the Moon showed that its composition over there is absolutely different. An explanation for this inconsistency can be found in the giant impact hypothesis. In 1898, English astronomer George Darwin suggested that 4.5 billion years ago, Earth collided with a protoplanet called Theia, about the size of Mars. This impact was so powerful that it could have destroyed the Earth and life would have never appeared in the solar system. Luckily, that didn't happen. With the devastating impact through most of Theia's rock and some of Earth's mantle into Earth's orbit, these fragments eventually formed the Moon. This explains the oddities in our satellite's chemical composition. Most probably, the dark side of the moon contains some of Theia's debris. However, this theory doesn't explain the origin of lunar rocks older than the solar system. In 1973, researchers found that some lunar rocks are over 5 billion years old. On the other hand, Earth and the other planets of the solar system formed 4.6 billion years ago. This discovery prompted researchers from the University of California to assume that the moon actually emerged almost two billion years earlier than Earth. Our satellite possibly formed in another star system. Then the sun's powerful gravity captured the moon, which eventually became Earth's satellite. If that's the case, all this time an object that literally flew in from the depths of space has been revolving around the Earth, but the problem is that none of these scientific hypotheses has been 100% proven. In the millennia of studying the moon, not only hasn't humankind approached the mystery of its origin, but quite the opposite. It has become even more confused. For instance, scientists know that the moon has no magnetic field of its own, but the Apollo astronauts brought magnetized pieces of moon rocks back with them. But they could become magnetized only under the influence of a magnetosphere, which, as mentioned, our satellite doesn't have. In April of 1972, the Apollo 16 crew made another astonishing discovery. About 100 kilometers deep under the moon's surface, they found two ferromagnetic shields, each over a thousand kilometers long. The find looks like someone built two giant steel support beams inside the moon. To date, nobody knows how they ended up there. 
It's possible NASA has more information, but the space agency doesn't seem in a hurry to share it. For some reason, even the information that rock samples brought back by Apollo 14 contain water was kept secret for 40 years. And only in 2010, when the news that lunar probes found 600 million tons of water ice in the satellite's craters made headlines, did NASA finally reveal the information on the earlier find. So, we definitely won't know the truth about the ferromagnetic shields anytime soon. And now on top of all the moon's secrets, there are those mysterious flashes. It's possible the solution to their mystery hides inside the moon. The thing is that our satellite has a strange orbit which doesn't fit its size. This makes scientists think that inside, the moon could be less dense. During the first landing on its surface, astronauts installed seismic equipment. This hardware detects different kinds of activity, from meteorite impacts to artificial explosions to emergency landings of space rockets. For example, during the Apollo 12 landing, they identified a tremor which in its force was equivalent to the explosion of one ton of TNT. The equipment registered that seismic impact, but there was something unusual about it. It only peaked after eight minutes, while its shock waves, instead of abating, went 30 times higher. Both NASA and the Apollo astronauts were awestruck by this phenomenon. Such extraordinary shock wave propagation could prove a theory proposed back in 1962 by Dr. Gordon MacDonald from NASA. In one of his articles, the scholar suggested that, considering the moon is significantly less dense than Earth, it could be absolutely hollow on the inside. Lunar craters could be another proof of this theory. Every day, the moon's surface is bombarded by about three tons of material, but only large meteorites leave visible traces. Furthermore, the width and height of craters left by such impacts must be in a certain proportion. But for some reason, this rule doesn't apply on the moon. The study revealed that its large and small craters are basically equal. According to one hypothesis, small meteorites leave cup-shaped depressions in the moon's rocky surface, while large objects literally bore through its rocky surface, hitting a high-strength metal layer underneath. Soviet astronomers Michael Vassin and Alexander Sherbakov back in 1970 suggested that the moon consists of a several-mile-thick outer rocky layer covering an armored metal hull over 32 kilometers thick. Findings made by the Apollo 14 astronauts partially back up this theory. When they tried to drill through rock at the bottom of a lunar crater, they hit metals, copper, chromium, zirconium, mica, and pure titanium. Could this be the cause for the mysterious glowing? And we simply observe the flashes when meteorites impact this metal layer. There's something eerier to the Soviet scientists' theory. They believe that inside the moon, under the metal hull, there's a habitable atmosphere. Writer Herbert Wells was the first to come up with the idea of a hollow moon in his book, The First Men in the Moon. But some scientific hypotheses are even bolder than science fiction. Back in 1970, USSR scientists Michael Vassin and Alexander Sherbakov seriously considered that it's actually possible. They assumed the moon was an artificial hull inside which there was life. According to the Vasin Shcherbakov conjecture, a space body was sent from some remote region of the galaxy to circle in Earth's orbit, and an advanced extraterrestrial civilization has existed there for millennia. The scientists speculated that unknown creatures living inside the moon were far more developed than U.S. Earthlings and possess more advanced technology. According to their theory, after Earth formed, an extraterrestrial civilization built a space station to observe possible life on our planet and disguised it as a satellite. It might sound quite bizarre, but without the intervention of an extraterrestrial civilization, humankind might not have appeared. The point is that the existence of life on Earth depends on the moon. Our satellite influences Earth's axial tilt, adjusting it by one degree every millennium. Without the moon's balance, Earth would tilt 85 degrees every million years. Earth's orientation relative to the sun would change so greatly that it wouldn't shine over the equator, but over one of the poles. All the ice on the sun-facing pole would melt, leading to extreme floods. At the same time, all year round, there'd be night in one hemisphere and the other would be constantly scorched by the sun. So these aliens really could be hiding from scientists' gaze at the same time controlling and supporting our terrestrial life. 
and people keep finding clues that support this hypothesis. Since 2009, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been exploring our satellite's surface for future space missions. A part of its research, Lunar Surface Photos, was published on Google Maps where anybody can see them. One such person, self-proclaimed UFO expert Scott Waring, found something strange on the dark side of the moon. He claims to have spotted a 15-kilometer-long alien structure in the large ancient crater Demoreus in the northern hemisphere of our satellite's far side. Worthington zoomed in and realized he was looking at the side of a massive building. But studying the same spot in other moon images, the amateur astronomer found that the building had mysteriously vanished and the crater appeared in its place. Worthington argued that NASA tries to hide the truth about its discoveries and cleans up any photographic evidence, but secret information does occasionally make it into the media. In 2007, photos allegedly made during the Apollo 20 mission began spreading online. They were published by astronaut William Rutledge. According to the official version, from 1961 to 1975, they launched 17 lunar missions, 11 of which were crewed. Apollo 18, 19, and 20 were called off due to financial constraints, but William Rutledge insists the Apollo 20 mission was nevertheless launched in 1976. It included William Rutledge, Alexei Leonov, and Leona Snyder. Rutledge argues that during its mission, Apollo 15 discovered an unidentified object on the moon's far side, presumably a spacecraft. Two subsequent missions carried out reconnaissance of the terrain from orbit and took a number of pictures. According to Rutledge, Apollo 20 had the task of landing near the alien ship and studying it using rovers. The astronaut claims the crew successfully landed next to the mysterious massive spacecraft, which was over three kilometers long and 500 meters across. Compared to it, the Apollo shuttle was like a pebble against a Stonehenge slab. Rutledge says they managed to penetrate the ship and inspect it from the inside. The crew apparently found alien bodies preserved in glass tubes running through the object. The astronauts even took ahead of one of them for research. He also says the crew found the remains of a six-fingered female humanoid pilot. If this is really so, the astronauts were totally stressed out and it'd be cruel to demand evidence from them, like the alien head or at least a photo of the female humanoid. But NASA probably just expropriated the finds and keeps them a secret as they usually do. However strange Rutledge's story may sound, since 2017 there has been new evidence in support of the theory of an alien civilization on the moon. Ken Johnston, a former director of the Data and Photo Control Department at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory, claimed he had access to original copies of the photos, films, and slides from the moon. According to Johnston, Despite an order to destroy the photo archive, he saved some of the pictures in his private collection. Among them, there is, for example, a picture of a rectangular structure on the satellite. Studying such findings on the moon is the objective of a project called Search for Alien Artifacts on the Moon, founded by a researcher from the Institute of Radio Astronomy of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Alexei Arkhipov. The scholar argues that if there are really intelligent creatures on the moon, they understand that people do observe them. This is why the hypothetical extraterrestrial civilization has to gradually clear up its traces in the regions where Earthling spacecraft appear. Alexei noticed that the mysterious flashes on our satellite become more frequent after every lunar mission. He's sure this is how the alien civilization destroys their structures and cleans up the evidence of their presence on the moon so that people won't learn of their existence for as long as possible. But what does official science say about the flashes, no matter how frenzied the alien theories are? Scientists still haven't agreed on where the mysterious flashes come from. But there are three primary theories based on scientific research. One of them belongs to scholars from Neliata, a project created specifically to study the moon. The project uses the Great Telescope of the National Observatory of Athens, rigged with a special camera. It allowed the scientists to detect up to eight flashes per hour on the moon. The researchers believe these flashes are the glow of material that forms after asteroids hit the lunar surface. The thing is that when a small asteroid approaches Earth, it burns up in its atmosphere. 
However, the moon has no atmosphere, so when a little rock impacts it, it shatters against its surface, heating it up and producing a flash. Some researchers believe it's got nothing to do with meteorites, and these are specular reflections. You see, as time passes, rocks from the moon's depths outcrop as a result of erosion. These rocks formed inside craters 150 million years ago. When the, they reflect sunlight at a certain angle, we observe the flashes. But the exploration of our satellite never stops. In 2023, a new group of scholars took up studying the lunar flashes at an observatory designed particularly for this purpose. Astronomers constantly observe the moon using two cameras located 100 kilometers north of Seville, Spain. When both cameras detect a flash, they record detailed photo and video materials about the event and send them electronically to the Julius Maximilian University of Würzburg in Germany, which oversees the telescopes. The project manager, Hokan Heil, is inclined to believe the flashes are a product of seismic activity. According to his observations, gas could leak from the moon's depths, reflecting sunlight. This could also explain the so-called lengthy flashes, which can last for hours. Even though scientists worldwide are studying this lunar phenomenon, its origin is still a mystery. Therefore, any of the theories, from the meteorite flashes to the explosions of alien bases, could turn out to be true. You can also come up with your own theory on the origin of the flashes, and it might explain the moon's secrets even better than scientists' assumptions. For example, we could even accept that our satellite is a mere hologram created by NASA and the moon flashes occur when space objects pierce the hologram. 